So there is a code rule 8.18, which says that um, if a ad is really limited by time and space, you don't need to include all the significant conditions, but you do need to include enough as much as you can basically so really think about what's important um, and include that something that's limited by time and space isn't going to be a twitter ad um, or a facebook ad although we appreciate that there's um, kind of a limitation on characters on Twitter and other social media, maybe Instagram. There's, you, you can have a use of image. So you can put an image with the terms and conditions in, or significant conditions, sorry, in, and put that in the ad. So the ASA really is strict on this. It, it, it does really have to be limited. So that might be a radio ad where, uh, you know, a digital radio ad, um, where you only have a set amount of time. It might be okay, but then again, it will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. And so these terms and conditions need to be accessible throughout the whole duration. You can't just kind of have them clicking from the original ad and then the link becoming broken or anything like that. They need to be accessible throughout the whole duration. Um, and as I said, I kind of touched on earlier, you shouldn't change terms and conditions at any point throughout the promotion unless they're unavoidable circumstances and that means circumstances that are outside of your outside of the advertisers control um, and they shouldn't kind of det cause detriment to participants in any way. People are understanding that they can add GIFs and emojis. Twitter, for a lot of my readers now, is a much more fun platform. They're getting tired of Facebook and I think with the news about Facebook recently as well, maybe we can see more competitions moving to Twitter. A lot of people still don't really get Instagram. They just don't really understand it. Perhaps they think it's still for professional photographers and bloggers, not interested in entering on Instagram. So if you're running a competition, people love to enter on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, not quite as keen. A cottage holiday, something like a thousand pounds to spend on a British cottage break, that is what people see as a treat. If you offer them something that's um, a glamorous holiday or even something, a trip to Florida, they worry that that's gonna be a bit expensive when they get there. So quite often British breaks are really popular. And, and for me, I always remember when I had a butler for Glastonbury Festival and I flew in a helicopter over the Glastonbury Festival site. So it's things like that. It, probably give somebody this amazing memory for life. Uh, what we don't like, a classic, is why do you deserve to win? Uh, this is something that happens a lot recently with Mother's Day competitions. Why does your mother deserve this amazing bouquet? Of course, a lot of people, their mums aren't around anymore. So you're going to see loads of terrible sob stories. It actually brings people down a lot. And I'm on Facebook a lot and I can go to different competitions. And there are people who went to competitions and they will copy and paste the same sob story. And they will put that, you know, there's a box of pencil crayons here. There's a holiday for two there. And they are pasting the same paragraph on every competition. Again, remind yourself what you actually ask people to do. Did these people enter on the right platform? Did they enter before the closing date? A classic is when you ask for a selfie and then you announce the winner and it's, and it's a photograph of a dog. You know, a dog has not taken a selfie. That is not a valid winner. And people will comment and they will say, it's a selfie competition, it's a dog. So it's, you know, it might, you might think oh, it's a cute photograph, but please check against your own terms and conditions before you announce it. We don't like public vote. I don't need to tell you much about that. Emily's already covered a couple of terrible examples that always have so much bad feeling. It never works like that. It can get really traumatic, particularly if there's any kind of children's artwork or photography involved. People get really mean on social media when it comes to voting. We have seen a number of disjoints uh, in projects where we've been working with an agency that's obviously got a client. And we in the agency have agreed the judging brief, we've done it all, we've selected 10 winners, we present them to the client and they, say, they go, no, that's not what we wanted. It was too damn late. The terms and conditions say that we're looking for a witty promotion. We're not looking for an arty one. But the client's saying they want an arty one. These things must be discussed up front. Right. What, this was a premium rate entry, no free route, two pounds. What is the maximum speed limit on a motorway? That was found by the Gambling Commission, not the ASA, the Gambling Commission, which is the legal authority and the prosecuting authorities in the UK, to be a non-legal activity. Because they were charging, there was no skill, and there was no free entry route. So it's a photo or a painting competition, and there's 10 prizes. What's the harm in you offering another 90 certificates of merit? Those kids will love it. 
they'll brag about it at school and then they'll put it up on their wall and it's got your brand there. You need to allow sufficient time between the closing date and when you set in the terms you're going to announce. Because if you have 5,000 entries and the closing date's today and you've said you're going to announce the winner tomorrow and you've got 30 three uh, you have 97 man hours of work to do before tomorrow that's going to be a bit tough it's going to be a long night for 10 people right so you don't do that you have a closing date today and you say we'll announce the winner in two weeks time don't wait till the end to judge start you can start your judging along the way so that you've got less to do at the end and ideally have weekly winners as Dai said, if you can showcase winners during the promotion, that adds believability, and I want to be the winner next week, the week after, and ongoing. Um, for the random um, generation of selecting winners at random, um, what classes of random? Um, I mean, I know you can put all, everyone's emails into a system and they pick one out, but would a number generator be enough? Or? You could go on random.org, and it will give you a random number between 1 and 1,092. Uh, that, unfortunately, I don't believe meets the criteria for the ASA. Why? Because you go to 92 and you say, oh, I don't like them. That's Di Coke. She won last week. Oh, I'll go back and I'll get another number. No, that's Fred. No, I'll get another. Oh, oh, that's John. I'll have him. I know him. He's a nice guy. Right? The process is not secure. If you haven't written anything like that in your TCCs about someone says, no, I, actually, no, I don't want to go, what, I guess, is the process there? Do you well, you've got two choices. You can always slip them some money, even if it's not in the terms, and make them happy. Um, or you can offer them a cash alternative. You can potentially disqualify them. And then you will suffer the wrath of social media when they go, the mean guys at Pepsi took, took me away. Um, holidays are the best prize, but they're also the most problematic. If you're a smaller agency, you don't use a computerized company such as yourself. Oh, well, they'll leave. Independent. <laughs> <laughs> How would you find an independent public go and find, let's say, six judges or whatever? A lot will depend on the nature of the topic. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's a, I want to win a whole day because, then it's someone completely disassociated with your agency and the brand. Mm -hmm. Technically, that could be the man in the street, but it's somebody that you would trust. So, for example, if you had a freelance creative, okay. um, that might work. Uh, or somebody from Veritas might work. <laughs>